Welcome back guys, we've got a brand new series for you. We're gonna be doing Saturday Sarnies for the whole month of July. We're starting off with a Philly cheesesteak. We've got a beautiful piece of ribeye beef, some pepper, onion. This is my version of it, go with it where you want. We've got butter, we've got some beautiful American cheese and the all important salt and pepper. Let's get it. So first off, what you wanna do is you wanna start looking and bringing your attention to the beef. We've gone with the ribeye. This is a Rolls Royce of beef, in my opinion. Beautiful fat marbling through it, and we've just taken it out of the plastic it comes in, put it on a nice plate, and let it air dry in the fridge for a couple of days. You wanna hug the bone with your knife, taking off the minimum amount of meat. So as the bone gets to the bottom, we've still got a tiny bit of, this is the spine. So the rib bone attaches to the spine. They've taken it off with a bandsaw. You might have to go over the spine knuckle in order to get that last bit of beef off. Never waste this, always keep them back and we can make a beautiful stock with it. Or broth. Nice long strokes with your knife. And you let the knife do the work as you glide it through the meat and create these, these blocks of beef that we're gonna season, freeze, and then slice across to get our beautiful little wafer thin slices. Wafa thin slas. So you want salt and pepper all over that beef. Flaky salt, sea salt, rock salt. I like the flaky sea salt. If you wanna use kosher salt, if you wanna use pink Himalayan salt, any salt you can find, get it all over that beef. Pick a beef, any beef. Rub it around and just collect all that salt and pepper. Collect it off of the board. And then you almost wanna form it back into your little blocks. And then these are gonna go into the freezer. These are gonna solidify and harden in that beautiful oblong shape so you can slice through. Cleanliness is close to godliness, so make sure you have a clean down between your jobs. Now, the onion and the pepper. The sweetness, the, the charred vegetable flavor that you're gonna get in a beautiful Philly cheese steak. So we take the top off, and we're gonna take the root off. Now this root here is what holds all the nasty chemicals that basically make you cry. So what you wanna do is try and keep that root intact at all costs. You're just gonna slither the tiny bit off the back. That's gonna keep the onion whole and stop you from crying so much. A sharp knife also helps. Straight through the middle, and then we take off that first layer. Can get a little bit chewy. Onion down to the board. And when you get to this little bit here, right, when you're slicing onions, what you wanna do, instead of worrying and slipping and sliding and all the rest of it, just put the face down to the board. So it's easier for you to get at. And now we're gonna slice the pepper. Everyone's got a little trick of the trade. This is mine. I want you to take the pepper down to the board. You slice through the top knuckles. The stem is off. The maximum amount of flesh is off from around the top of the seeds and the pepper is still intact. Bring the knife in and then we just move it across. Keep your knife flat and you unravel the pepper, cutting out all the seeds and all the white bits. Voila! down to the board and just slice through it. This is a humble baguette I've got from my local bakery. It's soft, it's nice, it's lovely. What I wanna do is bang that with some buttery garlic flavor. So we're gonna take our garlic onto the board. You wanna get your middle finger, the knuckle of your middle finger engaging with the end of your knife and you're just gonna slice down. Make it wafer thin so it melts when you put it into the butter. So for the cheese, we've gone for American cheese. American cheese because it's an American sandwich. We're gonna cut it into triangles so it layers over that steak beautifully and covers it in a nice little melted cheese blanket. Why have we gone for the American cheese? Because it's an American sarni. It's melty, it's gooey, it carries pepper beautifully, which is what we wanna hit it with. Loads of salt and loads of black pepper. Now when you're cutting bread, there's something to remember. And that is, you have the whole of your knife to use. So when I see people cutting bread and they're not using the whole length that God gave them, it makes me sad. When you're cutting bread, it's a motion, it's a feeling, but you don't want to go all the way through it because you need a little pocket to catch your steak in. Pan on. Get this seriously hot. Oil's going to go in, then the vegetable. Now don't be worried about this vegetable kicking off. It's going to spit, it's going to smoke, it's going to burn slightly. That's the flavour that we want. I like to stir my caramelised vegetables with one thing only. Hoofing great chopsticks. Now when your vegetables go into the pan, it's important you hit them with a good amount of salt and pepper. It's a staple, it's a flavor that you don't know is there, but without it, you're gonna be missing it like mad. 
You want them caramelized, nearly burnt on the bottom before you go in. I'm using a big, heavy bottom pan as well on an induction. That's gonna keep the heat. It's gonna keep that sear, that rolling caramelization that we want. I can smell the pepper. It's caramelizing on the bottom of the pan. It's filling the room. It's burning my nostrils. This is the things, the key elements that you're looking for when you're caramelizing good vegetables. It's a spicy meatball. So you wanna take these out of the pan onto the plate. Now this is stop the caramelization, stop the cooking. These are gonna rest on the side until we're ready to put them back into the beef. Now this pan is cooling down. It's got the charred onion and pepper flavor in there. Residue of salt and pepper. We're gonna hit it with a good amount of butter. It's got just enough heat to foam the butter, not enough heat to take it to Bermoisette. We add our garlic, thinly sliced, and then that just melts in. Salt and pepper, and then you swirl. It's gonna be the nappe that goes over our stunning baguette. Take your garlic butter and then just lather that over the top. The garlic, the pepper, the bits of charred onion that have stayed in the pan, these are all going to flavour that bread. You want to get your grill on hoofing hot, as hot as it possibly goes. We stick it under there for about three to four minutes, but have a look. You don't want it to burn. And if it does start burning, just take it out. Put it in, take it out. It's a what? You'll make it about. So the baguette has come out after three minutes, stunning and golden brown. A beautiful, warm, garlicky base to hit with our smoky peppers, beautifully caramelized steak, and melty, monty, mont jack cheese. When your beef comes out of the freezer, you've got to work fast. You want to keep it as cold as possible because when it's cold, the fat is solidified and the protein is nice and firm. It makes it easy for us to take our most noble blade and slice through the grain, getting these wafer thin strips of beef. You're using the whole length of your knife, every inch of the blade. If you bought the whole knife, you've got to use the whole knife. Just want to season them up before they go in the pan. We do it before they hit the heat. Now this is an anilon pan, so when I scratch it with metal, it doesn't make a difference. If you're using a non-stick pan at home, maybe go with a wooden spatula. Little touch of oil and the meat goes in. Now as the fat in that beef warms up, the slices are gonna slowly come away from themselves. So give it a little mix, and then you wanna leave the beef flat on the pan. Now when you can see the steak is caramelizing, you've got a little bit of time to get those onions and peppers into the pan. And because they're already caramelized and charred, you're not adding a load of excess moisture to the pan so it won't cool down. You wanna give this a little toss and then start to form it into the same size as your baguette. Cheese on. You want to lay that down the steak beautifully. It's like a little cheesy blanket. Then lid on and turn her off. Get your bun ready on your board. Finishing salt and pepper ready. We take the pan away from the heat source and we lift. Voila! Hit that melted cheese with a good amount of pepper and a little sprinkling of salt. And then we take this proud mound of cheese and beef, caramelized onion, and we just scoop it onto the sandwich. And you can smell the charred pepper and the beef the beautiful caramelization from the steak. You take your top, squeeze it on, and you should have layers and layers of stunningly roasted beef, charred pepper, charred onion, that perfectly melted cheese slathering out the side of that steak. We've got the garlic butter that's toasted into the baguette. In my opinion, a proper Philly cheesesteak. This is a perfect Saturday sarnie. Got plenty more of these to come. It's the Philly cheesesteak. Have a good weekend.